This has been my MO lately, my bread and butter. And I really try to bring that belly button to my spine when I bring my knees in. I already have the juiciest pump. And now I'm like, I really need to work on these again. I'm not leading with my belly button, right? You guys, I just realized this is our first week of workouts at this gym. of workouts you guys i have no idea what episode we're on i feel like i want to say episode 10 i don't even know if we're still even on that train but anyways welcome to another week of workouts this is going to be my first one where i'm finally going to be mic'd up for every single workout so i could really be real time i can give you real time form form pointers all that sort of stuff and you could really be in the gym with me so i'm really excited for this this was like the main reason why i bought those wireless headphones yep headphones the wireless mics in the first place so this split specifically is designed to help you stay fit lean and athletic and i've been training for a while now for like six years i'm also an ace personal trainer and i've gone through so many different phases with my fitness journey of bulking and cutting putting on muscle trying to lean out and lose body fat all the things and i found that this split specifically is really the perfect split spot for me in terms of making sure i'm not overtraining, be mindful of my hormones i'll make sure i'm feeling really strong and fit and healthy while also helping me with weight management and helping me maintain more of a leaner physique and staying more athletic because that's just personally where i like to stay it seems like a more well-rounded sweet spot for me in terms of this longevity aspect of this lifestyle i found when i was just solely lifting only doing that it was very one-dimensional and i felt so unathletic i felt very slow all that sort of stuff i just didn't feel balanced not only in my physique but also with my performance and with my training and all that sort of stuff so to break down the split for you we're really only weight training three days a week which always sounds crazy when i actually like extract that because it doesn't feel that way so monday is going to be a leg day total legs still doing total legs quads hamstrings glutes all the things tuesday is total upper body day um that's specifically because I'm happy with my upper body muscle mass. I'm not trying to build more. And then Wednesday is going to be actually our cardio day, which we'll get to when we get there. I'll explain it. And then Thursday is another leg day since we've had two full days to rest. And then Friday, I'm still doing those full body functional days because not only are they so fun and they're a really quick workout, but they also help me so much with feeling more athletic, helping with speed, agility, balance, stability, all that good stuff that makes you feel much more like a well-rounded individual. Also very much so helps with maintaining a little bit more of a leaner more athletic physique and as you guys know I'm usually a huge advocate for like a step goal but I still don't have one I haven't had one in so long a because it's winter but also just because I don't really have a strict physique goal and sometimes it's just good to like give your body a break and I've been enjoying like having more of a milder exercise regimen right now I recently leaned out I lost about five pounds and so I feel like this split helps me maintain that but this is just the workout split and the types of workouts that I did to help assist me in that leaning out process All right, you guys, welcome to leg day. I've been so used to filming vlogs for like TikTok and Instagram where I just kind of go straight into actual the workout, like I don't film my warm up. So I almost forgot to film the warm up, but luckily I remembered. So nothing has really changed from what I used to be doing. Still start off with my foam rolling, of course. This has helped so much with your spinal mobility, honestly, Ugh, and it feels so good. So before your workouts, you want to be doing more mobility work, more dynamic stretches where you're taking your muscles through movement, and then you want to save that static stretching for after the fact. And then I still like to flip over to open up my shoulder socket. So things like foam rolling that help to promote blood flow is a great thing to incorporate in your pre-stretching routine. And then in terms of our first mobility stretch, this is called the world's greatest stretch. So essentially all you're gonna do is start in this plank position, bring one leg up to where your hand is in that plank, drop that same arm elbow down, ugh, and when you're really tight, it'll be hard to touch the ground. And then you're gonna rotate up towards the sky. You can rock on that outside heel as well of that foot that's up by your hand. That's gonna get a nice um, glute stretch, hip stretch, and that rotation is gonna hit the top of your, your thoracic spine. And then you're basically gonna lean back on this heel to get a hamstring stretch. So it's really full body stretch. We're getting the groin, oh, the hip, the upper back and the hamstring, it's a good one. Okay, next one is like a deep 
Frogger stretch, stretch, <laughs> Frogger stretch to open up the groin and also to help with the ankle mobility a little bit. So I'm coming into a deep squat all the way down. I have my elbows pressing my knees out as well to kind of increase that stretch in my groin. I'm gonna grab my toes and then straighten those legs to stretch out the hamstrings. So I'll basically just keep doing reps like this. Again, as you can see, we're taking our muscles through a motion in order to stretch. So we're constantly moving in these movements and not just sitting static. Another good one for a hip opener and hip mobility, these are called 90-90 rotations or also windshield wipers. Essentially, you're just trying to keep your heels planted and bring those knees down to the ground. But just this movement is gonna help get some range of motion within that hip joint. And then I'm also gonna go into a low lunge here to also open up that groin. All of these I do for probably about like 30 seconds a piece. And then this last stretch is really amazing to help increasing ankle mobility. And this stretch alone has helped so much with my squat depth, like just in a matter of a couple weeks. So essentially what we're gonna do is position your feet no, you're good. So essentially what we're gonna do is basically just put your foot a few inches out from the wall and you just wanna try to drive this knee to touch the wall while keeping the heel on the ground. So you really should be getting this stretch back here. Sometimes I'll literally even hold my ankle and just really try to put weight to try to get my knee to touch the wall. And I kinda of will just do reps of this. All right, people, we're officially just straight up vlogging in the gym. I'm gonna start off with the leg press behind me. Of course, we're starting with warm-up sets, and I feel like that was never clear when I started lifting, but do your warm-up sets, people. They're so important. It's really just a set of like about half the weight. Nothing crazy, like eight-ish reps, just to get some blood flow, just to get some perspective of where your strength is for the day, because we're fluid changing beings. All right, so now we worked up to two plates in a quarter, and we're gonna stay here for, we're gonna do four sets of like eight to 10. Oh, that felt so good. That felt really good. You know when a good random song comes on like right at the perfect time when you're like going in? That is just what happened. So in terms of form, I have a very conventional stance for this. Just about shoulder width apart, kind of in the middle of the pad. I'm not doing super low or super high for more glute. I'm not pointing my toes out, they're just straight forward. Two biggest things when it comes to hip, uh, hip thrusts, yep, <laughs> the leg press. I'm really mindful of my range of motion because if I come down too low, that's gonna cause my butt to kind of come up out of the pad, off the pad. And that's what really causes a lot of stress in your low back and then your lower back's gonna be really sore. Trust me, it's happened to me too many times to count. So I really try to suck my belly button and press my belly button into my spine and into the back of the pad to make sure it stays really pressed into the pad and to make sure that I'm not letting my butt kind of wink up. So I'm really mindful not to come down too low so that doesn't happen. And also at the top of the movement, I'm making sure that I'm not locking my knees out. So when I'm coming up, I'm not gonna make it, I'm not gonna make my leg come to a full on straight line. I'm gonna have a little bit of give in my leg to make sure that I'm protecting my knee so I'm not putting stress in that knee joint. And same thing with any leg exercises, I'm constantly pressing up through my heels to really engage my glutes. 12. I'm feeling a little strong today, boys. Also, with that being said, make sure you're not neglecting range of motion though. Like I'm still coming down the full way. Just not too far where I'm bringing my knees into my chest and that would be making my kind of butt pop off the pad. Do I go up and wait? I think I go up and wait. I'm adding tens, people. Wow, I still got 12 with those extra 20 pounds. That's crazy. All right, now we're gonna move into a barbell RDL, one of my favorites ever. So essentially this is a hip hinging movement, meaning I'm not just gonna bend over, I'm gonna start the move by pushing my hips back and hinging at the hips. So by doing that, that's inevitably causing my torso to fold over rather than us just bending over. With that, my back is nice and straight. I pretend like there's a board strapped to my back, my neck is in line with my spine, and I'm making sure there's no arching or curving in my back. And when I push my hips back and I let myself fold over, 
I'm basically painting the front of my legs with this bar. I'm keeping the bar really close to my legs and I'm driving up through my heels. My feet are about shoulder width apart. I'm keeping a slight bend in my leg to protect my knee. If you want this to be a little more glute focused, you could have a little more knee bend like this. If you want to be more hamstring focused, you're gonna straighten those legs a little bit and then come back up. And basically you just wanna go down as far as your mobility and flexibility allows till before you can't push your hips back anymore without needing to compensate in any way. And when I pick up this weight, I'm gonna roll my shoulder blades back and down to engage my back and have a nice steady base. I'm feeling strong so far today, so I'm going to add on a little bit extra weight. And I am using little wrist straps to help because my grip strength isn't always carrying the team, you know what I'm saying? These are linked in my Amazon storefront, which is linked down below. But this just really helps because my grip strength usually gives out before my leg strength. Okay, next exercise on the menu is some Bulgarian split squats. These are deadly, but I wanna move into some unilateral work, meaning we're only using one leg at a time. This is what the exercise looks like. And in terms of form, a lot of people think this is just like a vertical up and down motion, but it's more so like a diagonal down and back type situation because I'm kind of sinking in to this working leg's heel to get a greater stretch in the glutes. You guys know I'm always trying to make things more glute focused. So with this range of motion, I'm coming back and down into the lunge instead of just up and down. And when I'm doing that, I'm having a little slight forward torso lean to again, increase that glute stretch, which is inevitably gonna cause some more difficulty on that glute instead of here. I'm bringing my torso forward a little bit. And as you can tell, my shin is nice and vertical. So when I'm coming back and down, I'm forcing a lot of the weight onto my heel and I'm keeping my shin vertical, which is again, causing a greater stretch in the glutes to have more tension and load on the glute. And then I'm basically just gonna shoot back up and driving through that working legs heel. Your back leg is just a stabilizer. These are deadly, I can't even sugarcoat it. If you think I'd be able to talk during those, y'all look crazy. Okay, now we're moving into a little hip thrust complex. We're gonna do two sets of full range hip thrusts, and then from there we're gonna do two sets of cast bridges, which I'll explain the form when we get there. So in terms of hip thrust form, I'm using a decline bench just because it's a lot more comfortable for me. But if you don't have a decline bench, you could totally use a horizontal one, but it should be just about to like the bottom of your shoulder blades. And then you wanna scrunch up your feet till if your feet, if your legs were completely out, you kinda wanna bring your heels to about where your knee would crease. So now you're pretty much in position and all you're gonna do is basically drive up your heels and lead with your hips to get up to this tabletop position. So now, as you can see, I have about a 90 degree angle formed in my leg between my shin and my thigh. I'm always constantly looking forward. We don't wanna be dropping our head back. And honestly, using a decline bench helps that because you kinda of can't because the bench is right there. So you wanna make sure you're keeping your chin tucked to your chest. And the whole point in doing that is gonna help create a posterior pelvic tilt. So if you're someone who really struggles with back pain on a hip thrust, this is really important. You don't wanna be le leading up with your belly button and causing your hips to tilt forward. You want to create that posterior pelvic tilt by tucking that tailbone, tucking your belly button to your spine, and that's going to help to tuck your pelvis and inevitably have more glute recruitment. Re glute recruitment. And so we're basically going to stay here the whole time. I'm put, driving up through my heels and I'm locking out fully at the top of the movement. I'm not stopping here and having a three quarter rep. I'm coming all the way up till I cannot extend anymore because that's the hardest part of the movement. That's the most important portion of the hip thrust. So I'm going to shoot for two sets of 15 here. Maybe ambitious, but we'll see. That was some good mind muscle connection. All right, now moving into form for a cast bridge. Everything is pretty much identical to a hip thrust, except it's a shorter range of motion. So with the hip thrust, you guys saw, I came all the way down pretty much till I couldn't anymore to the weights were about to touch the ground. And then I'm coming back up, but with the cast bridge, it's more of a concentrated range of motion, if you will, on the glutes by 
minimizing knee flexion, so there's just inevitably less quad engagement there. So essentially just gonna be coming down till just before, like right now, as you can tell, my shins are completely vertical. You wanna come down till about here because any further, my knees are about to drop in and then there's gonna be an angle in my shin. So that's too far for a cast bridge. You wanna come down till just before your knee would have to drop in. So I'm stopping about right here. This is the bottom of the movement and then coming back up. So it's kind of almost more of like a pulse situation as opposed to kind of like full hip thrust reps, if that makes sense. I'm honestly just gonna go till it feels like I kind of can't no more. was that number for me. Okay, I am freaking toasted because I just really gave my all those other exercises, but we're gonna finish off with some lateral work and I'm gonna use this little hip swing kick machine behind me. If you don't have this machine, you could totally just use a plate. I would love to do a freaking glute med kickback, but the shin doesn't have ankle straps, which beats me why, and I've been meaning to order a pair on Amazon and just haven't gotten that far yet. But essentially for this machine, I just put my leg up here and then it like rotates out as I kick to the side. And I'm just gonna do three sets of 12 to 15. I'm so ready for dinner. Right, we're sticking with 12. Y'all, I'm over it. <laughs> Hi people, happy Tuesday. We're hitting upper body today and I'm not gonna lie, this has been my like upper body uniform. These days I wear every single upper body day just because I just truly have, I'm that person that has like specific sets for specific workout days. I haven't been doing this every single upper body day but I feel like doing it today. So we're gonna do some jump roping. Um, probably just for about like five, 10 minutes. I really just do it until I'm over it, but this helps me get my heart rate up, get everything loose, get some blood flowing and get warm for the twerk out. Okay, surprise, surprise, but not. We're gonna start with some pull-ups because I was so keen on doing these and then I just haven't done them for so long and now I'm like, I really need to work on these again. So I'm just gonna do three sets of chin-ups, as many reps as possible, pretty much till failure. Okay, that first set actually felt really good. I felt way stronger than when I did these last week. In terms of form here, I always try to remember to track my shoulder blades back and down. I tend to do it at the end of my sets because I'm just going till failure that I'll kind of scrunch up. But ideally, you want to drop your shoulders away from your ears, retract your shoulder blades back and down to really engage your lats. Okay, next we're gonna move into more of a horizontal back motion here um, and due to the grip on this one since it's so wide this is definitely going to be hitting some of our rear delts or like the back of our shoulders but this should be primarily hitting our upper back same thing as i always say try to attract your shoulder blades back and down keep your chest nice and open and we're essentially going to be leading with our elbows towards like diagonally behind us and we're just going to do three sets of eight to ten i like have a love-hate relationship with this Okay, moving into some chest work, we meet again at the machine chest press. This has been my MO lately, my bread and butter. I don't wanna do any other chest exercise other than this one because <laughs> let's just say it previously was a chore for me to get myself to do any sort of bench pressing previously. And this one is like tolerable for me. So we're just sticking with it. <sighs> Okay, so we're just gonna do three sets of 12 here. Same thing, retracting those shoulder blades back and down. I'm not gonna let my shoulders come creep up and meet my ears. Dropping my shoulders away from my ears the whole time, keeping my chest nice and open. I have a nice big sumo stance with my legs, which I know I can feel uncomfortable sometimes, but it's important to have a steady, stable base. I'm really digging my heels into the ground for stability as well, 
keeping that core nice and tight and then shooting out leading with my palms towards the front of the room. You guys, I just realized this is our first week of workouts at this gym. I wasn't aware of that. I feel like I didn't pay dues, enough dues to this video and respect this video. So if you are a subscriber that really only watches for when I upload week of workouts and you're not up to speed, I switch gyms, so. Okay, so next we're gonna do a little superset because I'm notorious for supersets on an upper body day. I can't not do a superset on an upper body day. So essentially we're going to do an upright row and then go into a seated skull crusher. Also, I've been listening to Miley Cyrus while I work out and it's she has a few bangers. Currently listening to Nothing Breaks Like a Heart. Also, Mother's Daughter also is a hit for me. Okay, so first we're gonna do an upright row, like I said, retracting those shoulder blades back and down, dropping our shoulders away from our ears. My core is nice and tight. My chest is nice and open. I'm having an overhand grip. And this is where we're targeting the sides of our shoulders. And basically you're gonna lead up, drive with your elbows towards the sky, and you're gonna stop till your forearms end up to be about parallel with the ground. Usually tends to be about the middle of your chest as well. And I'm keeping that bar really close to my torso the whole way through. And then this is supposed to be isolating our triceps. So essentially, you're gonna to wanna to pretend like there's a rod running through your elbows. Your upper arm should stay very stationary. The only movement here is gonna be in your forearms, moving down and up at the expense of you contracting your tricep to bring that barbell up. So I'm basically just gonna drop down. Again, my elbows are staying relatively stationary, pretending like there's a rod running through them to pin them. And then I'm gonna come down to as far as I can and then shoot back up with my palms towards the sky. And you're going to do the upright rows and then go straight into these seated skull crushers. And then you're going to rest and complete two more times for a total of three sets. All right, next we're gonna finish off with a bicep exercise because I haven't really done any bicep specific work just yet. And I recently remembered this exercise recently as I'm, and <laughs> recently as in last week. And I love it because it just completely eliminates momentum and really isolates the biceps. And we're already using the decline bench, so we might as well just stick with it. Well, I guess technically the incline bench. I'm letting my arms hang down. I'm still dropping my shoulders away from my ears and I'm basically just squeezing up with my biceps. The biggest thing with the curl, two biggest things, same thing with that tricep exercise with those seated cr skull crushers. I'm pretending like there's a rod running through my elbow. So I'm not really moving them any which way. My upper arms and my elbows are staying very stationary. And the only movement here is coming from my forearms to curl the weight up. With that, I'm making sure that I'm not coming in and then coming past the point of tension and letting the bar kind of, I guess, plop into my chest. I'm stopping at that peak contraction about three quarters of the way before I would lose tension and then coming all the way back down. So since I've really been slacking on just like my calisthenics, I feel like I went through such a hard phase where I was doing push-ups and pull-ups like all the time to try to like get stronger at them. I really haven't been doing them, spoiler alert. So I think I'm gonna finish off with literally just one set of regular push-ups, see how it goes pretty much till failure. For a push-up, my wrists are stacked just about underneath my shoulders, my hands is shoulder width apart. I'm keeping my belly button tucked to my spine nice and tight. I'm not letting any arching or sagging of my back, keeping my neck in line with my spine. And when I come down, my elbows are coming out more so at a 45 degree angle from my side, as opposed to like a 90 degree angle in a T. I'm not even counting. Two more. All right, that's a wrap, boys. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>Right, peeps we're back happy wednesday it's currently a blizzard outside if only you guys could see so i'm all bundled up right now but we're in the gym and lately i've been playing some racquetball i've been a racquetball girly for the past like few weeks so i do that a couple times a week kind of just depends on when my boyfriend and i want to play and today we're going to play so we're going to start off with racquetball or probably we'll play a few games i'll report back but usually it's about like 30 40 minutes and then we're going to actually do some cardio believe it or not
right, so we're finished with racquetball, and my boyfriend literally wiped the courts with me. We played two games, and literally it was 11 to 1 and then 11 to 5. So clearly I'm pissed because nothing's fun when you just get obliterated like that. But we're going to get better. We're going to work on it. But basically once a week I've been doing a more intentional cardio session because I basically have no steps at all. I don't have a step goal. So I've been doing the traditional 12 through 30 just an incline walk. I find that's when my body responds the best hands down when I just stick to some sort of walking for my cardio because I think my body just has enough stress with how hard I lift normally throughout the week and like with my full body functional day. So having more so like of a mellower, low intensity, steady state form of cardio once a week has been doing wonders for me. So I just do an incline of 12, a speed of three, and then for like 30 to 40 minutes, usually most days 30 minutes, but sometimes 40 if I'm feeling it. And it's great for my mental health. And I just have been really enjoying it. It gets me warm and has me break a little bit of a sweat, which is rare for me in Utah in the winter. Hello people, happy Thursday and welcome to another leg day. I've already done my warm up, same thing that you guys saw on Monday. I've already done a few warm up sets because we're starting with hip thrusts today. Because last leg day I didn't feel like doing them in the beginning and have all that weight. But today we're gonna shoot for heavier hip thrusts. And I did two warm up sets, a plate, then two plates, and then we're working up to three. So because I'm feeling like I can do it today. So that's it, I'm listening to my throwback playlist today so vibes are high. Okay, so on my last set, I actually decided to do a little drop set action. I didn't film it, but I essentially just took off a plate and then repped out 15 reps. I had to take a couple breaths in between, but I knew I had 15 reps in me, so I just hammered that. Drop sets are always like truly the death of me. But anyways, now we're gonna do some Smith Machine step ups, no not step ups, deficit reverse lunges because I don't want to do step ups. Basically I'm just using this little teeny step but don't underestimate it because it creates just enough deficit to make these lunges brutal. So for this one basically our emphasis is on this front leg, that's our working leg. So you want to position it so that when you come down into the lunge your shin should be pretty much vertical and your knee should be stacked over your ankle again just like what we did for the hip thrust. So if your foot is too far out you're going to have an angle like this in your shin and if your foot is too far close you're going to have this angle in your shin so you want it to be vertical and you want your heel to be stacked over your ankle this is going to give us the greatest stretch in our glute which is what I'm always trying to target here and with that that's going to inevitably place the weight on your heel which you always want to be pushing up through your heel when you are doing leg movement so I'm going to push up get the weight off the Smith machine position this front leg and then basically sinking back and down into the lunge so it's kind of diagonal and not, I'm not just going straight up and down so I'm kind of pushing my hips back, again, shifting my weight onto my front leg's heel to position my knee to be stacked over my ankle when I come down. So I'm kind of shifting my weight back and then driving up through that front leg's heel. There should be minimal work on that back leg. So you want to pretend, you want to focus on not pushing up, pushing off. It's hard to explain when I'm tired. You don't want to push off that back leg, back leg. Another big thing here is you want to make sure you're going through the full range of motion. Lunges, the hardest part, or when you're in the bottom of that lunge, in the length and position. So a lot of people like to cut that corner and not go all the way down, but seeing as that's the hardest part of the movement, that is the most important part where there's the most tension. So you really wanna reach that depth point. All right, now we're gonna move into a little bit of a complex, which I love this one, because it's honestly a really good booty burner, a booty burner and a tongue twister. But basically we're just gonna use a landmine bar and we're essentially gonna go into a sumo RDL into a sumo squat. So it's like a complex, both of those are one rep. So here for a sumo stance, my feet are wider than shoulder width apart. My toes are a little bit pointed out. Since this is at like an angle, the bar is once it's up, it like is at an angle like that. I kind of kick my feet up farther forward than I normally would to account for that angle and I like to grab the bar with like interlacing my fingers so play around with kind of your angle your body position to the bar but I'm going to come down do an RDL so I'm keeping a nice flat back 
my neck is in line with my spine. I'm keeping a slight bend in my leg to protect my knee. And I'm pushing my hips back, which is causing my torso to fold over. I'm pretending like there's a board strapped to my back so it's nice and flat. And I'm essentially gonna drive up through my heels by squeezing my glutes to lift my torso up out of the movement. And then from there, we're gonna go directly into a sumo squat, still holding the weight. So same thing, kind of pretending like you're sitting back and down into a chair and then driving up through your heels. I also like this because the position of the bar like forces you so you can't shove your hips forward. Dude, I keep stuttering because I'm too tired to try to instruct all at once, but it's good because it keeps your pelvis in a safe position and not stress out your low back. Oh my gosh, my bum. I already have the juiciest pump and this is gonna be the cherry on top. Okay, I'm honestly still deciding this is gonna be your last exercise or not, but we're gonna do some isolated hamstring work. And this is a new machine for this gym for me. I haven't really ever used this in my life other than being at this gym. So this one, I'm basically trying to drive, I'm basically trying to kick my butt with my working legs heel, if you will. And when it gets hard, we all have a tendency to kind of arch our pelvis, like tilt it forward. But you ideally don't want to do that. And a way to prevent that is to try to drive your hips into the pad. Guys, come in, I have a little secret to tell you. I'm so beyond over this machine, I'm not gonna lie. And I really miss being able to do like glute meat kickbacks, lateral kicks on the cable machine. But so I've basically just been doing this or like the hip kicks every time and I just am over it. You know what I mean? Especially this machine is like an overkill. I love it, don't get me wrong, I love it. And if you're new, definitely do this. I just have been doing this machine for six years now. I feel this one the best, honestly, when I'm away from the seat and I have a little bit of like a, some flexion in my hip to create a little bit greater glute stretch. And then I like to have my feet at like the very edge of the pad so my heel is the only thing that's on the foot pad. And then I basically pretend I'm like sweeping outwards with my heels. I'm like driving with the outside of my heels. And then I'd like to touch the upper outer portion of my glute here, which is where we're targeting to have better mind to muscle connection. All right, dogs, that's a wrap. People, happy Friday. We're currently still in the blizzard, unfortunately. So um, motivation is an all time low. Really don't wanna do this workout, but we're in here and <laughs> gonna get it done. I jump rope for like five minutes to help get me warm and like get me more mentally in the zone. So today is my full body functional Friday where I'm essentially doing more functional kind of hip based movements to work more than one muscle group at a time and get our heart rate up. This is specifically to work more so on like balance, agility, athleticism, footwork, speed, balance, all that sort of stuff so the goal here is not to lift a lot of heavy weight here the goal is more so functionality so today I'm choosing eight different exercises and we're going to be going through three different complete rounds of all of them and basically going to be doing each movement for about 35 seconds each for the movements that are unilateral you're just essentially going to switch sides about halfway through that time limit and then we're going to be resting for 25 seconds after each individual exercise so you're going to be doing the exercise 35 seconds then you're going to be resting for 25 seconds and then be begin the second exercise, do that for 35 seconds, and then pattern continues until you make your way through all the exercises. Our first exercise is gonna be a dumbbell snatch, essentially. So you're just gonna take your dumbbell, come down into a big, nice sumo squat, and then you're basically just gonna explode up through your legs. You are gonna use some momentum here to whip that dumbbell up towards the sky. Again, I'm not using a really heavy dumbbell, just 15 pounds. And then halfway through, you're just gonna shift hands and do the same thing on the other side. So keeping a tight core is really important here and I really drive through my glutes and heels at the bottom to really help me explode up out of the movement. Okay, so this next exercise is gonna be a burner for your legs. Do not underestimate this one, it's so hard and I don't really know why. I think it's a stability aspect, but it makes my quads freaking quiver. So I guess this is essentially just like a BOSU ball alternating jump squat is kind of how I describe it. And you're essentially just gonna come down into a big squat, jump up and then shift legs and essentially pivot if you will and just switch to put your other leg where that original foot was. And you're just gonna basically be jumping back and forth and switching your feet. 
And then from there, since we're already using the BOSU ball, we're gonna flip it over and then shift more so to an upper body and core exercise. This one I love because it just gets your core engaged and just has a really big stability component. So you're essentially gonna go into a push up and then come up and go into four mountain climbers. So for form here, when it comes to a push up, basically I have my hand on either side of the BOSU ball and there's like little grooves in here. And that's kind of where I put my thumb so I don't slide. And I'm not making my arms come out as a T. I'm basically kind of keeping my elbows more so tucked so they're coming in at a 45 degree angle for my sides and then keeping my core really tight this whole time so I'm basically sucking my belly button to my spine kind of pitching it like a draw cord and that same thing's going to go into play when I'm doing um, those mountain climbers so I'm really going to tuck that core and try to shoot my knees up to my chest and keep that really tight core throughout the whole time and then from there the next exercise is going to be a little bit more of a full body recruiting one I basically just have a little loaded sandbag here but you can honestly use anything you could even use a kettlebell and I'm just going to go into a front squat here. This one is also amazing at really hitting that core, so this is gonna be brutal. Basic normal squat form, I'm keeping my feet about shoulder width apart and I'm pretending like I'm sitting back into a chair. I really like a front squat because it kind of forces you to keep your body a little more upright and keeping a really engaged core is so important here because that's what's gonna give you a lot of stability. And then this next exercise is a little complex that I actually just came up with today that I literally love. So basically you're just gonna keep this dumbbell up by your shoulder. You're gonna do a step up and drive your knee to your chest essentially up. And as you do that, you're gonna simultaneously do a shoulder press with this hand. So this is gonna be great for balance. Then you're gonna step back down, go right back into a reverse lunge, and then drop that dumbbell here. Come up to a little curl, step up, drive that knee and drive that fist to the sky. Come down, drop that dumbbell down towards the sky. Now we're in a lunge, step up, curl, and then boom, shoot towards the sky. This is just gonna be 35 seconds of different rope combinations, so whatever that you're comfortable with. I'm essentially probably just gonna be alternating through like this wave, alternating waves to like a double. I usually will just kind of alternate back and forth when I get tired between the two. If you don't have ropes, feel free to jump rope or do something else like burpees to really get your heart rate up. Okay, then I always like to finish off these circuits with some like very specific core work. So we're gonna be using a yoga ball for this one for the next two exercises actually. And so this is just gonna be um, ab tuck-ins is what I call these. To be fully honest, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do these for the full 35 seconds, so I will record on the screen what I actually did for these if I do reps or time. But essentially, very similar to a push-up here where I'm keeping that core nice and tight. I'm tucking my belly button to my spine, and then I'm basically gonna try to bring my knees to my chest while really keeping that core nice and tight. So I'm not letting my core sag, I'm not trying to arch it. I'm just keeping a really nice tight core, and then I really try to bring that belly button to my spine when I bring my knees in. And then our final exercise is gonna be good mornings. So essentially you're gonna take the yoga ball in between your feet, extend outwards again, tuck that belly button to your spine, and then you're gonna crunch up, grab the yoga ball, tuck that belly button to your spine, always dropping down this way, and then just basically coming back and forth. The biggest thing here again, is just continuously tucking that belly button to your spine. That's gonna help not have your hip flexors or like the front of your hips take over the movement. You really wanna focus on pressing that belly button in to have that be where the work is coming from. That workout was like, 
I feel whipped. Holy crap. Anyways, let me know what you guys thought of this like mic'd up version. If you liked it better than the voiceovers, you want like a mixture, like whatever. Just like let me know. I feel like I've been just testing out different versions of this and like seeing how it goes, how I like it, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But if you do like these style videos and want to see more of them, don't forget to like this video, comment down below, letting me know your thoughts, and subscribe so you don't miss any videos from me. Thank you guys so 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 much for all of your love and support. I love you guys so much, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.